What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Everything in Potterition because sometimes the internet can be too much. My name is Colin Sparling and I am one backwards compatible boy. And I'm Robert and I'm a I'm a Sony fanboy. You get fuck off Xbox. I hate you. Just kidding, Phil Spencer. Please sponsor us. And I'm Phil Spencer and I will not sponsor you no um i'm i'm daily wilhelm and because robert's being so inflammatory i must defend xbox fuck fuck you and your playstation more like pay station more more, more like x bad <laughs> oh oh i'm mortally oh, wounded shit. oh shit oh shit <laughs> <laughs> well here we are guys we are on the one two three ninth generation of consoles now um and here we are where we made it through this this year with the pandemic and the sicknesses and the the, the joblessness <laughs> and, I mean, honestly, and here it's, we are now with our playstations it, and our xboxes it's been a great november right november 4th covid disappeared absolutely uh, november entirely. 10th xbox november 12th playstation it's it's a good november guys yeah it's i mean good. it's it's at least a good way to get our Minds off of all the shit happening in politics right now, um, and and thinking about you know, he who should not be named, um, but Voldemort. It, it, what? Don't don't say oh, his name, oh, Robert. Shit, shit, he's gonna come Robert. after you now. Now now he he's gonna you're gonna he's gonna be at the foot of your bed when you sleep at night. He he's staring is. at you. Oh he, oh, he always is. Yeah, just kind of curls up. How long little... have you guys been together? Uh, about two days. Ah. <laughs> Do you get? Do you call him? Do you call him Voldy for short? No, I call him Mort. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, new consoles are here. We got we got stuff with with high frame rates, with high resolutions. All your games look and feel better. All new controllers. All new all new s stuff. And and nobody can buy these fucking consoles. <laughs> it's the new new, but not for it's you. Not for you, because everyone has bots and in, in our scalpers and buying them all up. Uh, but Robert did get lucky enough. To, uh, I believe he got a PS5. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Um, I have been playing the Series X forever and ever now because uh, as I posted on social media, that's been my job for the past, I don't know, five or six months. Ooh, um, ooh. And so, yeah, I can talk a little bit about that. I can't go into details about the job, but I can talk about uh, the Xbox and playing it and stuff. Um, so we're going to talk about that and daily is going to ask lots and lots of questions. And then we're going to talk about console wars and how those are revved up once again, because we are in a brand new console generation and how console wars has evolved over the years. So it should be a good time. All right. So Robert, I think we should start with you. You've had the PS five and I really want to hear so far your impressions from your time spent with it so far. I mean, it's just PS4, but fast like TLDR. It's just PS4, <laughs> but really like that's it. I mean, the graphical improvements are nice. Like RTX looks cool and seeing Spider-Man reflected in the mirror or in, in like windows and it's kind of like a live reflection is really cool. Uh, and the load times are nice. Like you could just open up the map, uh, quick travel, fast travel, and it doesn't even play the uh, miles in the Spider-Man costume in the subway cutscene because there's no time for it. It just boop. Yep, you you want to be in Harlem? Bam, you're in Harlem. Done. Like like, do you get a glimpse of it? Like, is no. it like almost trippy? It's just it's just not there. It's just non-existent. You, you hit fast travel, black screen for one second, and then Spider-Man's running up outside of the the like going up the stairs from the subway, and just bam, there you go. You can play. Wow. Okay, yeah, so fast, very yeah. fast. And uh, um, yeah, I have ahead. a question for you about playing Miles Morales. I know that there's a mode where you can have kind of like the animations from the the movie from Into the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. where it's like the bam, pow, schmack, and yep. like the kind of like weird frame rate. Did you do that at all? And did it I play well? I did both. Um, I turned off the frame rate, rate one real quick because like I really appreciate it in the movie, like how... If, if you haven't seen Into the Spider-Verse, um, educate Miles, yourself. It's a good movie. Would recommend. Uh, Miles moves at what is it like half the frame rate as everyone else at first until he becomes comfortable being a Spider-Man. Then he moves at the yeah. same frame rate as everyone. It's like that's a really neat trick, um, and you can turn that on in the game. It just it it's real wonky. I don't I don't really like the way it looks it's a personally. Wonky. 
Yeah. But the Wham Bam Pow. Oh, yeah. 100%. Because on the PS4, mm, it doesn't quite work the way it's meant to. I think it mm. was really a PS5 thing. Yeah. But I mean, that's it does. Cool. I think it works the way it intends to on PS5. I just don't like the way it looks. <laughs> okay. Much. Yeah. Um, um, so what, I, what I've played at the PS5 too, and I think, uh, like because Roberts let me let me check it out a little bit. I think the most impressive thing overall is just flicking through menus and booting up games and booting up apps and going through the the PSN store is just so quick and snappy now because everything would just hang so much on PS4 to the point where it'd be like fuck it, fuck it, I didn't want to go to the store anyway. Mm. <laughs> it's just so slow and so yeah. hard to find anything. I mean, now the PlayStation Store is like it sneaks up on you. Like, I'm so used to, like, you go to the PlayStation Store and you hit it and then I can go and, like, make a coffee and a bagel and then I can come back and it's still loading. But now you hit it and it's just like, it's right below. It's already loaded. It you, you wanted the store before you even got to the store. Oh, dang. It's weird. It's inconvenient how fast it is. How dare. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> drank coffee. should be so fast. Yeah. Oh, no. Caffeine withdrawals. That's why yeah. everything seems so fast. Yeah, not to mention the PS3 where you could literally go out and buy a gallon of milk and it would still be loading the store by the time you got back. That's what happened um, with my dad. He's still he's still out there. <laughs> he's no. still waiting for that loading screen. <laughs> oh, no, he went out for the milk. And the cigarettes? Yeah, the yeah. Cigarettes. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah, I mean PS5 overall, I mean there there is an a million and one impressions and breakdowns of tech breakdowns and things like that. Um but just kind of want to give a little bit of our, our personal impressions. I mean, the graphics look good, as you can see. I mean, there's plenty of shit about that, too. Um, and same thing with the Xbox. I, th I think generally the Xbox, um, I've been spending time in the Series X and Series S. Both of the consoles are extremely fast. Everything boots super fast and everything. The UI looks the same. If you have an Xbox One, the UI looks identical. I mean, they, they have the same unified UI now. But even before, it never really looked all that different. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the UI on, on Xbox just feels like the Xbox One. And uh, if you had a hard time finding stuff in the Xbox One, that's not going to change anytime soon, unfortunately. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. Uh, but the Xbox Series X, I think the biggest thing that it has going for it uh, is that everything is just so easy um, with backwards compatibility and save transfers and stuff like that. Like you throw the disc in, you play the game. It just works. Uh, you play the game that you played on the Xbox One. The save is just there. Um, it just ha it just works. PS Five, from what I understand, Robert is a lot more uh, <laughs> not as convenient. So, I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't tested the PlayStation like save movement much because I, I I like to be on the cutting edge of things. Uh, if if it came out over a year ago, it's dead to me. So I, I, haven't, oh, wow. <laughs> I haven't bothered really to um, test all that out yet. And also, like, I'm reviewing Miles Morales for my site. So I've kind of got to web sling my way through that as fast as possible. Do you really feel like Spider-Man? This game really makes you feel like Spider-Man. Hi, I'm, I've, I work for I, Igan. I work for the website Igan.com. Igan. Igan. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> like when you swallow wrong. That's the sound it makes. <laughs> it's like you you know it's about to go down the wrong pipe, but you saved it at the Ooh. last second, but it's still very uncomfortable. <laughs> I mean, it should, it should, might as well be again now because IGN doesn't stand for something anymore. Well, I mean, they do as a company stand for something. No, I, they I fall know. for everything. Well, it's not an acronym for anything. <laughs> just Igan. That's all you are. Ein. It's just Ein. Ein. Yeah. Ein. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall, I, again, like that's next gen console impressions are, 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 you know, they're, they're fine. There's not a whole lot of games to play on Xbox. There's a couple games to play on PS5. They're fast. They put out a resolution. You can see all that shit. There's plenty of content creators out there. I'm sure you probably know all about that stuff. If you're listening to this. Um, you know, but, I, I, I was about to make jokes about how like, oh yeah, what's it like playing Halo Infinite or Crackdown 4? But then I remembered like, because of your job. <laughs> that might put you in a weird place, so I'm not going to make those jokes. Oh, yeah. Well, I <laughs> couldn't fucking tell you anyway. <laughs> I mean, like legitimately, I didn't I didn't have any sort of hands on time with any of those anyway. So there's it doesn't matter. Um, Hi, this is Colin's lawyer coming in. He's contractually obligated to say <laughs> that. <laughs> Crack, what, it's fun, funny what a totally different you, uh, voice you have <laughs> yeah colin's lawyer funny if, i think the, the funniest part of that whole thing is crackdown 4 being made because 
<laughs> that's not happening. Um, <laughs> but cloud computing, Colin. <laughs> cloud computing for Cl destruction. Cloud destruction. The clouds that... will destroy us all. Mm -hmm. Is I what I'm getting from this. I feel like that's this. Sephiroth's line. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so obviously, uh, oh, I wish I could play Halo. Oh, wait, doesn't it's not coming out. Right. Oh, I wish I could play Cyberpunk. Never mind. Well, I mean, Cyberpunk <laughs> is coming out just, oh, just in, in a month. Let, we hope. Maybe. I mean, that's the fourth yeah. time it's been delayed. Who knows at this point? Yeah, uh, cy cyber, who, cyber who? Uh, so with, with uh, brand new consoles and all that stuff comes a brand new generation of console wars, you guys. Oh gosh, console wars. How many times have you been in the comment section of an IGN tweet or an IGN post? How many times have you been in the in the comment section of a YouTube video on the PlayStation or Xbox accounts and just seen so much shitting like, you know, Xbox is better, no PS5 is better. And and you, this is why cuz it's high resolutions in Halo and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I did a deep dive on on Twitter. Uh just just going through I'm willing to bet right now listeners at home if you go on the at xbox twitter account and look at the the five most recent posts i don't care if you're listening to this in 2020 or if you've unearthed this in a deep time capsule in 2045 go to xbox's twitter look at the five most recent posts and i guarantee it'll take you less than five seconds of scrolling to find playstation better why why it be like that why do people feel the need to continually be like well actually this is better because x or this is better because ps, which is ps for playstation ps, do you ps, see what i did there ps, just five ps, just five i i mean that you have people like that but then the same people go over and, and start blowing vape smoke into their series x so uh <laughs> day one like tweet day one tweet they had to say don't don't vape <laughs> with your if we had to say this <laughs> don't vape with but, your xbox guys <laughs> Now, I, I'm calling it, I'm willing to bet some uh, YouTuber out there who does mechanical stuff or like ma a maker, a, a maker YouTuber is gonna buy an Xbox Series X, hollow it out and make it a vape rig. Might as well. We got, we got the fridge already anyway. So mm -hmm. the Xbox fridge. And it'll be that. on H3, H3 at some point. Vape niche, bro. Vape mm -hmm. niche. Not gonna lie. Uh, I would, I would totally own an Xbox fridge. hundred percent. Oh it yeah, nice. looking into making it's big. looking into making a Series X mini fridge as well. So I know one of the the big memes was originally just kind of making fun of the way each one looked, and it just kind of kept getting more and more ridiculous. That's how we got the the Xbox fridge to begin with. But how how do you guys feel about the respective designs of this generation? I feel like they are significantly departed from what we've been used to, and that's caused a bit of a stir uh in the gaming community mm -hmm. well robert as a ps5 owner do you want to take this one first yeah ps5 sucks um it <laughs> it doesn't look like it's so ostentatious like if you if you put it out in the living room you're basically just saying hey guys i'm a gamer <laughs> i'm a capital g gamer guys it's, like it's pretty big where do you put it yeah uh it's very tall and i feel like it looks worse on its side Right, because then it just looks disheveled. Right, I've um, not seen like any images except in like funny memes of it sitting on its side because it just looks like it's fallen over. Exactly. Uh, whereas I, I think I like the design of the Xbox because the Xbox is at least it's more tame. I mean, it has the cool little dip at the top with like the greens when you look down through it. Um, so it just feels a little more elevated and it's like, oh yeah, that's my gaming machine. But you know, I also use it to watch Blu-rays. I'm sophisticated. I, I watch Blu-rays. Yeah. Is that sophistication <laughs> these days? Mm -hmm. I watch Blu-rays. Mm -hmm. I have I have a physical movie collection, so that oh. makes me eccentric. Wow. Um, yeah. No, I so I think with both consoles, you know, I've been staring at at the the two Xboxes for so long now, um, and you really do have like two different ends of the spectrum when it comes to design. Uh, my first impressions of of the PS5, like we saw, like the Dual Sense. And I was like, you know, at first I was like, I'm not in love with the, the, the aesthetic design, but then it was like, oh, someone's like, it looks like a portal gun. It was designed by Aperture Laboratories. I'm like, oh, well, that's a, that's a cool angle. Like I could see that. Um, but then I saw the actual machine and I'm just like, God, 
I think the worst part of it is just so big. It's very <laughs> it's big. so large. It's mm. very big. I, um, I, I read that um, Eugene Morisawa, who was the designer, originally was making it even bigger than it was. So just imagine, oh like, we could have had, like, a double. It looks like a binder to me is what it keeps reminding me of with the white. It just looks like yeah. a bent binder. I mean, that's the meme that's been going around. There are people who like take the, the fat PS2 and then just wrap a binder around it. And are <laughs> oh like, guys, gosh. I got, that's I got it. the PS5. That's it. You got it. it. Or it mm. looks like an air purifier or it looks like a router. And it looks like blah, an blah, blah, alien, blah, blah, blah. alien artifact. Yeah. yeah. And then you have on the, on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the Xbox, which is like the most simplistic, minimalist aesthetic design. And it's just like basically an obelisk. Like basically rectangular or are square prisms, you know, um, that are just one monotone color for the most part. Well, the Series S has like the black speaker looking fan on the top, but they're just two consoles, you know, on either side. And uh, it, it's it's crazy to me because then you spawn like the, the 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 big fridge memes and stuff like that, and then Microsoft you know, being the forward thinking community managers that they are decides to play into it. And they're like, we're going to make memes about this. We're going to like, you, you guys think this is a fridge. We're going to make a fucking fridge. We're going to like go from zero to 100 real quick on this meme. Whereas PS five, like PlayStation, just like it. We're just going to ignore it. Like that, that, that doesn't exist. And we don't care if you think our console looks like an air purifier, or like a, like a Wi-Fi router. <laughs> like we, we're and just going to ignore you, all of it. Could you fucking imagine being the folks at Microsoft? Like you're doing engineering R and D or something. You're working on the Xbox Series X two or something, and then your boss walks in and is like, "Hey, Sandra, I'm gonna need you to put all of this top secret Xbox stuff down. I need you to make a fridge. Make a fridge. We're making fridge now. Or like, how did I wonder? How did the designers feel like when they were like, okay, we're making the fridges? Like, you know, how everyone's been like, that kind of looks like a fridge. That kind of looks like a fridge to you for months and months while you've been designing this. We're leaning into it. Mm -hmm. Like, is that a slap in the face or is that fun? I don't know. I don't know how I would feel it as a designer at that point. But it is, it is big. It is boxy. You have to kind of come to terms with that. I, I mean, I don't know if Microsoft themselves actually did design the fridge, right? I mean, it's not like... It's not like the people at Microsoft are fridge designers or like fridge makers. That's no, like an entirely different appliance than a console. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to look into it, but I, I do doubt they're, that they they're made coming it. for just, uh, was, Whirlpool now or whatever. Yeah. Who, who makes GE. fridges? I don't know. GE. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft LG. is breaking into the fridge market. Look out, guys. Soon you'll be able to play Halo Infinite on your Microsoft, your Xbox series fridge. Series, series F. F. I'm just saying someone got Doom running on a, on a smart fridge. So, I mean, you someone can run got Doom the, on everything. Yeah, someone got the old Doom, the 1993 Doom, running on. You know that little touch? Like, the, remember, like a couple years ago, the new Max had that little touchpad at the top. Someone got Gee. it running in that, just in that little oh screen. God. It was oh weird. God. I've seen I it. Can do you one run on a pregnancy test? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Or or a graphing calculator. I've seen that too. It's weird. Man, talented um, folks. Doom, Doom, but, Doom, Doom, Doom. So I kind of want to want to bring this discussion to uh, the the Sony ponies and the Xbox as they're so lovingly known because ah uh, yes the console wars yeah because um I mean I, I console wars have been around for forever I think Colin you might know even better than me about like the back when the Sega the Sega do what Nintendo can't right yeah that was a tagline yeah so console wars started out I mean obviously the the first big console that you had that came out was was the Atari. And Atari kind of went unversed in the console world world for a long time. Just, you know, they do they were doing their own thing, and then the console crash of 82, 83 happened, or the video game crash of 82, 83 happened, and here comes Nintendo. And meanwhile, Nintendo comes out with their console in 85. Um, and in the background, Sega's doing their thing with the Sega Master Sy- well, the Sega's SG 1000 then the Master System, and then we have the 16-bit era. And this is when you see console wars for the first time really just blow the hell up and everyone is taking sides uh because you have sega coming out with with the genesis uh even before nintendo comes out with the super nintendo nintendo finally comes out with the super nintendo and that's when you get sega genesis sega does what nintendo don't and like 16-bit oh. blast processing oh, on the back whoa. of a drag race car yeah you would never like, see sonic and mario do an olympic together oh man yeah 
yeah, and wasn't then, there like some like kind of inflammatory ads like like of Crash Bandicoot like yelling in the Nintendo parking lot? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah back when that, the PlayStation great. came out, yeah, those are those are great. Yeah, he's literally in the parking lot of Nintendo of America, and he's like, "I'm coming for you, big plumber guy," <laughs> with a megaphone. <laughs> yeah. So it's clear that the console wars have been around for, I mean, pretty much since consoles have been pretty big and there's been competition in the gaming space. Right. But I feel like it's been, I don't know, it's weird. I feel it's been both exacerbated and mitigated by the internet in a weird way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the the interesting thing with the the console wars as they are now is uh, there's something that aren't have for a long time now not even been perpetuated by the xbox or playstation brands let alone nintendo right um like they're they've been extremely friendly on social media over the past five plus years um i mean it really hasn't been a super competitive thing between the two of them since e3 when the two consoles were like before they even launched um the that being the ps4 and xbox one um you know, because you have that infamous video of like how to share games on PS4 and it's just Shohei Yoshida handing off uh, the PS4 game to, um, oh gosh, I forget his name. Uh, and I really feel bad about it. Adam. Anyway, I'm sorry. I forgot your name. Dude, I'm sorry, Adam. Name. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's like, you know, here's how to share games with PS4. Thanks. And it's just yeah. handing over. But that was like, that was probably the height of it the last time we knew it. And ever since then, it's just kind of died down because... You know, Phil Spencer takes over Xbox and they just steer in a completely different direction. And then they come out with backwards compat game pass and PS4 is over here still doing the exclusive game thing, guys. And it's still what they're doing. And now they're two completely different things. There's no real reason to be super competitive towards each other. But that's not going to stop the fanboys from having a field day and trying to kick the shit out of each other over the over in the comments. Yeah, I don't know what I find so funny about the two brands is that the the PlayStation is pretty ivory tower-esque it's kind of ironic looking at the current ps5 console it kind of ha, looks like a literal ha, ha, ivory tower ha, ha, literal ha, ha, tower ha, ha, yeah. Ha. yeah it's the or it's um, or thank yeah and but they're they're very insular you know i mean they're notorious for not wanting to do cross play etc cetera, etc cetera. um but even with this launch of the new consoles you know on on november 10th uh xbox day you know they they went on a whole tweeting marketing campaign like oh yeah xbox launch day it's out and playstation the official playstation account is the top reply to that tweet that tw- the tweeted out a gif that was saying like friendship which friendship. was yeah it's really sweet and i'm really curious which intern badgered their superior enough to make that happen um but then on the xbox side of things you have phil spencer who's been leading xbox in such an interesting direction right like i mean just by content alone it's such a different plan right a different way to engage with the gamers and it's very you know when everyone plays we all win right and he's just extending the olive branch uh to playstation essentially just being like if you're a game we're a game that's the kind of vibe i get from him you know um and it's only been recently where they've had to make a hard move of buying uh bethesda but even then, it's not like 100% clear that Skyrim 2 is going to be an Xbox exclusive. Like, that's the world Xbox is living in right now, where if anyone can play their games, that's fine with me. Mm. But then the fanboys really suck. Yeah, what? So huh. so there's no animosity corporate-wise. So well, why? why? There, there's a little bit, but continue. I'll, I'll explain. But why? why is there like that, like, uh, like angry loyalty like we have to actively be against the other side like what inspires that is it is it just like i've always played xbox games i've always had xbox is it is it nostalgia like that that drives that or do people have to choose a side the moment that they are like okay i'm gonna be a gamer now <laughs> mm. Mm, i would i mean i would say it has to do with with competitiveness just overall competition just people like to take sides people like to have a team you know have an in and an out crowd um i think that part of it is just a little bit of psychology human nature type thing ironically a lot of those people that are fighting the console wars are probably the same people that are playing the same three games on the consoles anyway your maddens your call of duties and maybe the occasional exclusive if they're on playstation or fifa Um, can't forget fifa can't forget the world's football fifa yeah exactly uh 
But I mean, even so, there there have been times where like, yeah, like front facing, it's it's relatively friendly. But there are some sub tweets. There are some small jabs that both of these brands still like to take at each other. Um, for instance, when uh, the debacle happened with PS5 pre-orders, right, that like the day that PS5 pre-orders went live, like no one really knew about it. They just kind of like, they're like, oh, yeah, guys, by the way, Walmart broke the fucking street date and you can pre-order PS5 now. And Xbox comes out the next day is like, hey, guys, don't worry. We're going to give you like a good heads up and he, we're going to give you exact times when these pre-orders are going to go up and blah, blah, blah. So it's stuff like it's not a direct answer, but it kind of is a direct answer to what they're doing. Um, so from like a marketing and strategy standpoint, they are in a sense perpetuating it, but not directly. Mm. If that makes sense. They're not like, fuck um, you, PlayStation, but there is no. like some some needling happening there. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of opportunistic marketing is what they're doing. And and I mean, they're still they still I think they're just it's a friendly competition more than anything, rather than a like yeah. a fuck you type of competition. Yeah, and, and I mean, to be fair, too, it's not like Xbox has much of a leg to stand on because they're, when their pre-orders went live, they went through pretty much the same abysmal disaster that Sony oh, absolutely. did. So, absolutely. I mean, it's just, it, it's more like that tweet aged like fine wine, or not like fine wine, <laughs> like, aged milk. like milk, that one. Mm, um, delicious. Milky, milky wine. There you go. Oh, That's my, my that new band thanks. name. Milk wine. <laughs> um. Yeah, I I think with with the fanboys, that's that's what I kind of want to focus on. At least that's what I want to bring to the table, right? Because as someone who's a hashtag lifelong gamer, um, I feel like I'm I'm kind of at this point where I don't see um, uh, a lot of uh, animosity right between the brands. Um, I think the the more centrist idea. Not to bring up politics, not that I would dare bring up politics and something. About How games. dare the the more center of the the window idea of both can be good is surprisingly prevailing a lot. You know, you see a lot of uh, media inf- uh, personalities and influencers saying like, "Dude, doesn't matter. Buy Xbox, buy PlayStation. We're all playing games. Like that's that's the important part." And right. it makes me so happy that that message isn't being drowned out by no Xbox good, no PlayStation good. You know, because I mean, you still get those people, you still get those jagoffs. Um, but there's also that third group now that's kind of shouting them down or being like. In this, in these replies, salty Xbox fanboys or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just kind of making fun of them. It seems to me that if you if you have the means to do it, what a lot of people do is just por qué no los dos? Why not just buy both of them? Hmm. Right. Or, or even if you don't, I mean, like these are expensive machines. I'm not going to say, hey, go spend a thousand dollars plus tax to have both. Right. Um, you can be pretty satisfied with just one. Like, sure, you might be missing out on an exclusive or two or something, but like they both have really good benefits Mm. yeah absolutely i mean uh, unless you're like a hardcore fanboy and obviously if if you're an xbox fanboy and you decide to buy a ps5 the xbox police are going to come along and be like xbox police you know they're going to you know revoke your license and take you away to xbox jail for Mm. buying a playstation they just have like (laughs) halo weapons they have the the (laughs) energy sword yeah wait no that those are still in development daily those are Oh, oh sorry Sorry, don't yeah. come after me, Phil. Yeah, the development <laughs> time is infinite. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. I don't. Yeah, I, but it, I mean, it is a lot of just thoughtless argument over over specs and and what this game can do and what that game can do and how this game looks and how that game looks. And honestly, like more so than ever, these consoles, even from a, a, a specs perspective, are fam- fairly similar. You know, ever since we've gotten like the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro, like all of it has just been aligned fairly similarly. So not even really that is an argument anymore. I mean, there was there was so much bitching uh, when the Xbox One and the PS4 came out about how like, oh, PS4 is running all these games at 1080p and like Xbox One's running these games at 900p because mm-hmm. we still require the connect to be connected, which, by the way, I still take issue with. Um, <laughs> but um i mean so stuff like that is like a legitimate argument of like my console costs like the xbox costs more i love xbox but it costs more because i have to have a connect i think that's a valid argument Mm -hmm. against it right but not necessarily saying that like you know arguing over and over again about it is is not going to get you in it's a subjective thing it's like whatever works for you it's it's going to depend on the person and the situation and we haven't even begun to talk about nintendo or, or pcs yet so i wanted to ask you 
this question about the specs as far as you said that they're they're becoming more and more similar to the point that it's like these are just the the same things different packaging um do you think that then the only thing driving the the so-called console wars would be like exclusivity at that point which is also starting to kind of fade off Mm -hmm. i i think that's kind of it and i am hoping that you're hitting the nail on the head with what the future is looking like for consoles because at this point i mean ps4 and xbox one made it kind of apparent but this generation is making it even more apparent that these are just pcs these are just Mm -hmm. souped up pcs i mean the ps5 has a special ssd and whatever but the xbox does some weird shit with their ssds too so they're a little bit different but they're still basically pcs when you talk about them spec wise you're talking about a pc Mm. so i'm hoping that levels the playing field for more and more people to realize i'm just getting a differently shaped box that does games right um so at this point the only thing that i would assume is driving brand loyalty is either what the exclusives are right now or nostalgia right because with the exclusives right now i mean you've got playstation 5 with all of the exclusive games you know that's it's a pretty strong argument mm. with xbox you've got game pass which is a very affordable option for playing a fuck ton of games I, w- I would argue that's like an exclusive for xbox but i don't think you'll be able to get over the fact that jerry and his friends in second grade bonded real hard over the halo machine when they were playing oh, their xbox 360 theory. and because of that xbox best box no place fuck playstation i don't even need ratchet and clank metal gear who solid yeah i mean it's just i mean it's exactly what robert's saying i mean it's it's going to be whatever you have nostalgia for whatever you can afford i mean it's a myriad of factors like it, or wherever it has the games that you like to play if you like halo you're going to probably buy an xbox if you like uh you know the all the third person action game exclusives that playstation's been bringing to the table you're gonna buy a playstation um, I mean, it's it's really the argument of like Game Pass. It's the argument of like the more traditional way that PlayStation does things with just having exclusives and going platform heavy and building out the experience because um, Xbox is doing the whole like, you know, we're going to unify. It's basically all our consoles are essentially one platform with varying amounts of power. Your inputs are the same. The controller generally feels the same. The controllers are all usable on all the the consoles, all the Xbox one and, and, and the uh, series consoles. Um, but PS5 is like, this is a whole new thing and we're going to stick and do that. And that's why they've been diverging so much. They have different philosophies, similar spec machines, but differing philosophies when it comes to what happens on the console and your experience with them. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a good time to kind of bring Nintendo into the conversation, right? Because like you were saying, Colin, these two consoles are diverging real hard. Xbox is going full on, like basically being a PC as in it can work with anything kind of right. Like any Xbox controller, any Xbox you can play video games and that's about it. And it plays all of these games. You can get a service that plays all of these games easily and cheaply, right? Whereas PS5, I think one of the driving factors for it is that's the only way to play God of War. It's the only way to play um, Days Gone, even though I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think most people would. Why uh, would you? <laughs> yeah, or, or whatever Horizon. the next Naughty Dog game is, right? Or Horizon, right? Like it, it's the only way to play those. I think that's arguably one of the reasons a lot of people buy nintendo as well because that's the only way to play odyssey the only way to play li- the the sword mario the only way to play pokemon. smash pokemon, right pokemon pokemon but pokemon no one plays pokemon no i don't even know what a pokemon is um but yeah <laughs> it's the only way to play animal crossing right uh the reason you buy nintendo i mean the switch does have the the added benefit of being portable and a home console right but one of the driving factors is that exclusive software and ps5 is going in that direction where it's all about that exclusive software as well not to say xbox doesn't have exclusives but i don't think that's the selling point anymore right no so i think we're we're moving toward a world where there is more and more legitimate reason to want to own all of the consoles as opposed to during the 360 and ps3 era where it's like they're both call of duty machines and maybe the ps3 has some good exclusives like resistance you know like now there's just more reason to justify like all of the consoles can kind of fit in your life in some Mm. way shape or form Mm. yeah definitely i i think I think though, as we get deeper into this this particular console generation, I I think Nintendo's place is going to be a little bit 
more and more awkward um, when it comes to at least third party support, right? Because there's going to be less and less third party uh, devs that are going to want to support Nintendo's console because they, if they have, you know, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X to account for, then they're, I mean, porting those games all the way down to Nintendo Switch is going to be difficult. Um, so a lot of Nintendo now, really, a lot of Switch is just going to be indie games. It's going to be first party games. Um, because even a lot of the third party games that are currently on do well, do have switch versions rather, uh, just re- run noticeably worse on, uh, switch like so much. So almost to the point where they're unplayable in some cases. Uh, so that, that in, in terms of third party support, it's going to be weird for Nintendo. However, Nintendo isn't going to stop having, uh, you know, their first party exclusives, their Zeldas, their Mario's, their, their Metroids, whenever the hell that's coming out. Yeah. Whenever. Um, Yeah. Uh, but I'm curious to see whether or not they're actually going to end up doing some sort of switch revision to power it up a little bit, because I think even three years out from three and a half years out from the switch release, it's, it's starting to look a little underpowered. Yeah. For me, like the, when thinking of like the console wars, it's like Nintendo has always just been like, I'm over here, I'm doing my own thing. Um, and it's worked continually. Um, as far as doing something totally different and here's something new um because of the reliance on like well we have mario we have you know uh pokemon we have all these uh, deeply deeply nostalgic series that people are going to continue to come to um regardless of if people are dubious about like the switch and its design because i remember like when people were like the nx looks so weird it's gonna be so weird no one's gonna like that and like here i am i'm like on my switch every day (laughs) switch is a lifestyle it's a lifestyle it, it is but it's funny that you don't see often the Nintendo fanboys come out i had to look this up on urban dictionary apparently the the accepted term is nintendrone as for the Sony <laughs> yep. Pony yep. and the the Xbox, the Nintendo drones, <laughs> yeah. but they don't come up because no one's like like you're not going to see an ad for Call of Duty uh, Cold War, Black Ops Cold War, and everyone's like, obviously I'm going to play it on Nintendo Switch because that's the best place obviously. to play that video game, <laughs> right, guys? Like, no, there are no real Nintendo drones out there. I mean, the best argument they have again is like Mario, but that's kind of a winning argument because you can't say I'm just going to play Mario on my Sony because you can't. It's like, okay. Yeah. yeah I- I think the closest thing you get with Nintendo anymore is there's just a, if you look into Nintendo fan bases, right, there's a shitload of infighting when it comes to Nintendo fans. Like, there, there's always people that like, oh, I want this character for Smash or I want that character for Smash or they better port or remaster this game to Switch or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a lot of asking Nintendo to do a million things and, and a lot of Nintendo fans feel like it really seems like they'll never be satisfied no matter what Nintendo gives them. It's always like, I'm more, 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 more. Oh, you didn't give me Mother 3. Oh, you didn't give me Majora's Mask Remastered HD 4K Edition. Or like, I was really hoping, you know, that we're getting a Metroid Prime five, 4, 5, and 6 in this Nintendo Direct that's happening tomorrow. Like, <laughs> Could you say that of any, like, fan base, though? Oh, yeah, they're never satisfied. Yeah, yeah. But, but I do definitely see that. Um, there was this uh legendary comment battle that ranged over like three months in a YouTube comment about just like it started with "This is my favorite Paper Mario song," and it's like, really, this is your favorite? Like, I bet you haven't even played this one and this one and this, Ugh. and it just kept going. Oh, I hate that. It's such gate our slash idiots. gatekeeping. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I will say of of all the three consoles, I think Nintendo has the strongest uh, nostalgic hold on people. And this is coming from someone where my first console, and I've pretty much primarily only played on X, uh, PlayStation. The first Xbox I owned was Xbox One, and I have no nostalgia for Halo, which I, I respect it. I think it's a great, great soundtrack. Fantastic soundtrack. Um, but Nintendo has people by the balls. Oh, One- yeah billion percent no matter which way you lean you have memories of that first time you played mario and it was magical you have memories of that first time you figured out how the hook shot works and it's pretty fucking dank you have memories of that time where you saved your game right in front of mewtwo and you tried to catch him and you spent an hour trying to catch him and you failed and you killed him and you had to reload it and you had to do that like all goddamn day and that's the power nintendo has and i think that's why 
the fanboyism isn't so obnoxious because everyone is kind of understanding of it. In a like we all way. know, we've all been there. Yeah, right. we're all we're all subject to Nintendo's weird business practices because they just make money anyway. Yeah, it's it's a weirdly unique thing in the industry. And it's funny, like I've noticed myself, I'm subjected to this too, because I've I've criticized Nintendo before for like, why isn't virtual console a thing? Why isn't e- why isn't it easy to play older Nintendo classics on the Switch? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, why is Battle Pat or why is like any online game so hard to do? Why do I need to download an app to talk to friends while I play online on Splatoon? Right. It's all really dumb. And I even criticize Nintendo when their games get a little stale. Like I I'll be honest, I'm outing myself. <gasps> I didn't really like the new Pokemon game, Sword and Shield. It's Oh, that's it's, okay. That's Yeah, not... it's fine, but yeah. it it didn't evolve much, you know? It yeah. was just kind of bland. But but then when I read about Crown Tundra, the new expansion, and they're like, "Oh, you can catch all these legendaries now." There was a little part of me that was like, "Oh, that's legendaries. They're cool." Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, I know those legendaries. Oh. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like the whole thing with uh, with the the recent uh, Mario 3D All Star Collection. Uh, like, if, if PlayStation pulled some shit where they were like, "We're releasing a game and it's only going to be available until March of next year," like, they PlayStation or Xbox would be lambasted for something like that. Like, mm-hmm. they they would like. I mean, people were still bitching about it when Nintendo did it, but ultimately, that game is still the best selling fucking game on it. I think it was the best selling game on Amazon for a minute. It was the best selling game on their eShop. If like, anyone wants to spot me, like forty bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was like, you know, I'm so fucking pissed that Nintendo's doing this weird thing, but also here's sixty dollars because, like, I but still also want here, that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, take my money. Yeah. You have it. It's always yeah. been yours. <laughs> Nintendo has this weird power where they can be like, yeah, we're gonna sell you melted plastic that we've shaped to look like your favorite characters and put them on a little thing that can scan with all of our consoles and we're going to charge you like 15 bucks for it until they sell out right about now and now you're gonna have to deal with the scalpers and no one take my that's fucking money that. take uh, my money uh, do it amiibos are fucking huge but if xbox did that if they were like yeah we're releasing a master chief um a max a me a mexbo and if you Oops. buy it with Halo Infinite, you can scan it on the console and get extra ammo in the campaign. No one would buy it. No one would care. And no one would. It wouldn't build any brand equity for Xbox. No. You know, no, that's why they don't do stuff like that. I mean, there there are certain things that and, and PlayStation in a lot of ways is is Nintendo, too. And a lot of their philosophies and a lot of their like, I mean, they've they've straight up stolen Nintendo's ideas. Uh, like, like, just unabashedly, PlayStation Move was basically Wii, but in HD. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, um, everyone was know. like, "Let we got it, we got to get on this, we got to do this." Yeah, actually, actually, hold on, didn't didn't PlayStation actually do the the Amiibo thing? I don't, Wait. I don't think, I don't think they do you uh, NFC, but I think they totally aped the whole like, oh, it's our it's our favorite mascots, but in little plastic toys. Mm, I'm trying to, I don't think they did. I'm gonna have to look. Did this they? Up. I'm gonna look it up. You, you're gonna have to look it up. Yeah, YouTube ba- could... banter or something. I, I gotta. Okay, yeah, uh, but f- fucking, I don't know, man. And Nintendo's Nintendo's just always gonna have us by the balls. They're never not gonna make make money off of things. And that's the thing, though, is like they're already making all, so much money off of the things they currently do. And but there's so many more things that they could easily they could make an astronomical amount of money off yeah. of just doing doing certain certain things. Like I mean. Like something we need to keep in mind too when we see like these really gimmicky things that somehow make a lot of money, like the the Nintendo Labo, etc. Mm. Um, which I I believe did, didn't you buy some kind of Labo device, Colin? I I did, yeah, and I spent a night using it and I never touched it again. It's sitting on my yes. shelf over there. <laughs> but you you are in your twenties, and as we yeah. all are are still gladly worshiping at the altar of Nintendo, they they still remember that they're mainly, I think, focused on the people who are still growing, are the childrens who are like, oh my god, I need the Labo. Like even though they're gonna play with it like maybe a half dozen times and then move on. Because that's what kids do with toys. And that's fine. You know the best thing about Labo? Hmm. It's recyclable. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. You're, you're it helping is the environment. Straight 
cardboard and i i, never I will admit that. there was um it's only exclusive in japan and i'm kind of salty about it there's like these little uh pokemon labo cardboard cutouts like the little racer ones that you can make Ooh. run around and then they'll make import pokemon that shit noise. daily what are you import waiting on that shit i need it it came in a magazine it was a m- <laughs> exclusive to a children's magazine in japan oh, of course um God, that's some weird nintendo shit right there. that's that's some weird nintendo shit but i'm just man, i'm just saying here i am it, in america the, jealous as fuck <laughs> as, as someone who is um relatively up on like the the nintendo collecting scene and like retro collecting scene these people are like even old nintendo shit old nintendo shit that nintendo doesn't even make money off of anymore like people are fucking rabid for it i knew that these people like people are crazy about and nintendo anything when like mario cereal was out like a few years ago people were going to grocery stores and like buying every box that these grocery stores had and they were selling that fucking cereal on X on, on eBay for like 20, 30 bucks a box. I still and, think it's a crime. They weren't call, called Mario's. <gasps> they yeah, weren't. What were is, they called? They were just super Mario cereal. Super Mario cereal. No, the opportunity. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. And so I actually got snagged a box of super Mario cereal and it's still in storage somewhere at my parents' house. You didn't eat didn't it? Didn't didn't even eat it. Didn't even eat it because you can I just keep the box. It. Like just you can eat the, the cereal. Yeah, but I mean, you know, if someone says, "Oh, do you have a uh, Final Fantasy VII complete in box?" It's like, yeah, I do. I just ate the disc inside, but oh, I have the okay. box. <laughs> like, You're right. That's the exact same situation. <laughs> <laughs> mm, crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Um, Without so I, any milk. Oh my god. So I did do my research. Uh, PlayStation did team up with a thing called Totaku. Not Kotaku, but Totaku. Uh, but Totaku does uh, figurines for other gamer things. I just remember seeing a PlayStation blog post being like, okay, guys, look at our PlayStation collection of not amiibos. Um, totally so gotcha. not well, amiibos. I, I don't think you could use them in games, though, right? No, no, no. no. They're, oh, they're okay. just, I want Crash Bandicoot staring at me all the time. Kind of stuff. I do Same. remember that, but I just remember that like they didn't have any sort of like NFC scanner shit going on. Mm-mm. Well, because the Dual Shock or the Dual Sense now they don't have, as far as I'm aware, they don't have NFC things scanners in them at all. Yeah, I mean that's that's some shit that only Nintendo could get away with, like genuinely. Exactly, and it, and I, it just is. I think that that's what the, this past what twenty minutes of us talking about how weird Nintendo is. I think that's what that's kind of established is that that's the reason why I think Nintendo fanboys aren't out there defending Nintendo against the onslaught of PS5 and Xbox because they know it's weird. You know, they know it's its own thing. It 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 doesn't really compete when you're talking about what machine am I going to get for the holidays so I can pwn some scrubs in Call of Duty. Nintendo isn't even in the nope. building. Nope. It's not even on no. the block. You know, it's so, in Japan. No. Exactly. <laughs> Selling cardboard to children in magazines. So because of that, Nintendo is its, its weird own thing. But now I want to throw into the equation PC. How do how do y'all fare? Uh, what's your understanding of the PC master race? I'm I'm very new to the PC scene. I finally have my very own PC, um, and so far I've just played Spirit Fair on it and Hell Phasmophobia, yeah. uh, and I will play. That will be my machine for Cyberpunk, which I think is fitting because it feels like ooh, I got multiple screens. I'm like a hacker or whatever. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I in, until I actually got it, I didn't feel like I was missing out on a whole bunch. But now I see the error of my ways as far as like just playing with friends goes. Certainly, mm. it's it's a much more social. I I see why there's like the PC master race movement because it is so much more socially driven. I feel like when or at least you have that capability when you're on PC to just be like, I'm just gonna hop on Discord yeah yeah well i think it's just it's just more and more common nowadays for for people to have a half decent pc that can run you know a decent amount of games um and and so i I mean i've had plenty of experience with pc gaming in the past i've built a couple pcs for myself right now i'm just running a a laptop and i'm I'm waiting to build my next pc at some point you know because i'm waiting for that 3080 rtx fucking master race whatever yeah good good (laughs) thing those didn't get out of stock within the first second because of bots right Oh, it's cute to, I mean, it's cute to assume that I even have the money for that right now anyway, so I, I, I'm just forced to play the waiting game. It's fine. 
Um, but no, I mean, uh, PC is a, is a great thing, and, and it's understandable how how social it is. Um, I, I mean, for for me personally, like I I've always enjoyed PC gaming to a degree, but um, to me, like nothing quite beats the comfort comfort of just laying back on my couch and playing one of my consoles because it's just so easy and convenient. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. anything. The worst thing is trying to play a game and then it's like, oh, my PC needs to update the video drivers. Oh, it needs you know the game won't work because it's crashing, or like I need to restart my PC. Or my PC's on fire now. Gotta go put it out. Oh, don't you hate it when that happens? Card is melting. That, that has happened to me. Wait, like I've legit, really had a PC catch fire. A fire, fire. <laughs> like a real oh, shit. fire. Oh shit! Yeah, what did you do? It, I was playing. I think I was playing League at that time, and then I think it was just the connection to one of the hard drives caught a spark. And now you just got really tilted and set yeah. it on fire with your pyrokinetic powers. Pretty much. Mm. Um, but no, with, with PC Master Race, what I find so funny about it is, you know, I mean, if you if you look, you can find it. There is still R slash PCMR, right? Um, but when it comes to looking at the more public facing spots, like on Twitter, as an example, I don't really ever see, you know, like a PlayStation tweet and then at the bottom just be like, build your own PC. It's better, right? Like, I feel like PCMR has taken a step back from being... Um, What's the the clinical term? Dicks um, <laughs> yeah, to everyone, <laughs> uh, and instead they're just like cool. Like I, I feel like the uh, the 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 general feeling there is PC is still the best way to play almost any game, but we also yeah. recognize when you're staring at a five hundred dollar Xbox or PS five and a three thousand dollar expensive puzzle that you need to put together yourself that that's a pretty easy choice for a lot of people to make yeah exactly i mean it's just consoles for the most part are just so much less hassle and less money for that matter and the and the great thing about consoles now is like you know you pay 500 dollars and you're essentially getting a high-end dedicated gaming pc more or less i mean you're mm. you're getting i mean you cannot build out the a, a pc at 500 dollars and get the same power out of it for gaming you just can't um and so now they're they're just such reasonable things to buy for getting into the gaming space with with the consoles now there was a time like especially during the 360 and the ps3 era that like gaming on pc was significantly better as an experience like significantly better Mm. um because i remember when i built my gaming pc in 2012 and i'm like fuck console game are you kidding me like (laughs) it's like gaming on 360 was like fuck fucking awful compared to playing on pc back then like right. it was like, oh my god, I'm playing playing, you know, 1080p at at least 60 plus FPS as opposed to 720p 30 FPS but barely holding, you know, like mm. it's, it's it's leagues beyond. But nowadays it's just like, um, especially with more games getting crossplay too. You're, I mean, you can play with your PC friends. It's like having having a console now is is becoming less and less of a barrier to being social. Hundred percent. Right. I think we haven't mentioned mobile whatsoever. Is that just like totally <laughs> thrown out of this kind of debate whatsoever? Well, I think with mobile, the interesting thing is there is definitely a lot of um, stigma with mobile gaming, mm-hmm. right? Like, ew, mobile? I I don't play stupid gotcha games, right? King um, Crush. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but they don't come up in the console wars usually, right? Like if if you see a tweet about Oh, play the new Yakuza game on our Xbox Series X. Plays best on Xbox. No one's at the bottom being like, Candy Crush better. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Mobile phone. That's where real gaming's at, bro. Like, no. Nah. It's a totally different ball game. It's kind of like Nintendo in that sense where it's like, it's, it's over here doing its own thing. Mm-hmm. I would say so. I mean, the only mobile game that's really bridged the gap right now is Genshin Impact. And even then, a lot of the discourse I've seen about it isn't really all that much about the mobile experience. Like, it's I was, there. But, I was surprised yeah. to find, like, that. that's the main, I guess, discourse I've found is just like, wait, it's also on mobile? What? Mm-hmm. It's pretty good on mobile, too. I played it, like, between PC and mobile. It's pretty great. Cool. Yeah, I mean, mobile is is something really strange. I don't know if you guys remember back when, like, right before PS4 and Xbox One came out, but there was a lot of discourse, you know, going on in the gaming space about, 
oh, is is console gaming dying? Is is you know is is mobile gaming going to become like the next big thing? I mean, there was a time when Farmville was was the biggest game on the planet. For officially dead, it's officially dead. gone, yeah. officially dead now. Look where we are. Twenty twenty, another Flash. victim of twenty twenty. Flash is dying too. Very soon. Man. Yeah, December twenty twenty. Uh, there is a project grounds. to preserve those like old ass Flash games that we all played in homeroom when we're not supposed to. And Mm -hmm. I can Mm -hmm. probably put a link in the description of that project because it's fantastic and they're doing it totally for free. Is it Pokey? Is it called Pokey? I mean, for Tech Raptor, we've done a lot of stories about Flash this year. So... I'm I'm pseudo familiar in this space. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. Well, oh. yeah. There, there, well, there's those projects to preserve all those games, which is great. I think those should happen. And then also, uh, I believe even Newgrounds actually is building out their new ex- their own new extension to replace Flash, so all of their stuff is still compatible on their website. Nice. Um, which is great. So I'm I'm glad Newgrounds isn't dying because Newgrounds is still like I mean they're still going and they're still like they still got some stuff that happens on there. Um. And I mean, Flash is such an important part of gaming history because there's so many game designers uh, and level designers that have gotten their start on uh, Adobe Flash Player. Yeah, uh, I mean, Super Meat Boy, prime example. Yeah, Super Meat Boy. Never forget. Um, But no, I mean, gaming on the phone is just, I I don't know, for me, gaming on the phone has always just been, been extremely inconvenient. Like in a lot of ways, I know a lot of people talk about how convenient gaming on phone is, but to me, it's like this is a device for for business, for for checking social media, for getting text messages and communicating. Yes, hot minute, business like Reddit memes. Yes, ah, like yes. Reddit memes, like Reddit, you know. <laughs> and the minute I get on this phone, like I start gaming on it, I get text messages while I'm playing, and like uh, you know, I had to close the game out and then reply to the text, and then the game that I'm playing is probably eating my battery that I need mm. to last me the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just inconvenient for me to game much on my more phone, which into is, the idea of like a dedicated device versus like exactly. this is what I use for all the things. Let me not right. use that's, it for the fun things also. Right. That's that's why I have a switch. That's why I have a fucking Kindle. I don't like reading on my phone for an extended period either. Mm. You know. So. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not against mobile gaming because I mean I think it's a totally different market and it also, is. Also, I I'm I'm willing to stand for mobile gaming because there are some really slick mobile games out there that are not just you know like. Oh, you can play it for a little bit, then you have to pay us to play more. Like, there is some legit premium mobile games out there mm-hmm. that are really cool, especially in, like, the puzzle space. So check that out if, if you're interested in it. Um, but now that we've brought in mobile games, it has made me think, I mean, for one, the games industry, the games fan community has so many gatekeeping moments that I hate. Because for one, with mobile, right, specifically, there's the whole, oh, you're not a real gamer, uh, right? Yeah. But but then when you get past, like, even if you are a quote unquote real gamer by those standards, then it's, well, are you Xbox or PS4, right? It's, yeah, Nintendo uh, doesn't I, count. Yeah, Nintendo's not even real. Oh, your PC, wow, what a fucking loser, you know? It's like, dude, come on. Like, I've, all I've, of these machines play yeah. games. Just be there, happy with that. There is no being a correct gamer. Every Every gamer is wrong in some way, apparently. So you might as well yeah. just do what you want to. I mean... I don't know. At the end of the day, like, why are you spend wasting your time being all vitriolic about games on the internet where you could put spending that time playing games? You Play little the game. bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that, that's still where I'm at right now. Like, I've I've spent the past, um, like the latter half of the last generation owning all three consoles: PS4, Xbox Series or One X, and a Switch and PC. Right, and mm-hmm. I've never. Like the the one I felt maybe the most like oh maybe I wasted my money or I don't use it much is the Siri uh, the Xbox only because I have the PC and I'm almost always at my desk so I'm almost always like within reach of that right mm. but I also know again not everyone has a PC there is reason to own an Xbox just like there's reason to own every single one of these consoles so why can't we all just be happy gamers and and enjoy the fact that maybe. I can't play God of War, but my friend is playing God of War and he's enjoying it and that's cool. And maybe that'll prompt me to want to buy a PS4 or a 5 down the line. There we go. Let's just mm. let each other be happy and play the games that they want to play, like Bug Snacks. I'm not going to play Bug Snacks, but I've been enjoying the memes. Talking about Bug I mean, Snacks. It, Talking about Bug Snacks. It's free on PS Plus right now. Oh. Mm-hmm. It is free right now. I don't know. I have some issues with like, eating living creatures 
like I'm not a vegetarian <laughs> or a vegan, but like watching a live thing go down a Muppet's gullet, not my thing. And then their arm turns into the strawberry. That's there's also that whole whole part of it. But Bug Snacks could be its own episode, guys. Seriously, Bug Snacks is very strange and interesting mm. and fascinating. Mm-hmm. Talking about Bug Snacks. Yeah, I've I've done a little bit of coverage on Bug Snacks. It's a weird little thing. I don't think I'm gonna play it though. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah. Goodness. All right, guys. I think this, but it sounds like we've covered like a lot of things. We've covered covered the the, the oh, gaming space and mass here. Wait, we didn't There's talk more. about the Soldier Boy system. Oh, <laughs> console. Boy consoles. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I was thinking about it, but I kind of figured it wasn't worth talking about because everyone already owns one and is already a big stand of that console. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. way anyone Universal. would ever mouth it. Universal. <laughs> <laughs> no, no criticisms whatsoever. Soldier Boy, not just like all of his projects, he knocked it out of the park. Absolutely. I love how his approach was just like, okay, I'm going to take these these knockoff consoles and just slap my name on them and hope no one notices that they're he, full of Nintendo He told ROMs. him. Soldier Boy <laughs> told him. <laughs> he cranked you know, that. He cranked that. <laughs> What's the, the... I know no other Soldier Boy songs. I think that's You the and point, everyone though. else. Yeah. yeah fucking soldier boy yeah no i mean those i mean that that gets into the realm of like the ouya and i'm almost where the stadia is right now Ooh, or the yeah. atari vcs or yeah it's just th- those are consoles they don't even really have a fan base i haven't seen a stadia stan anywhere man online I think. and they could use that 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 rolls off the tongue so nicely too too bad uh-huh like i i remember a month or two after the stadia came out the the folks at stadia did an ama on r slash stadia so literally the safest space to do an ama about the thing you've made and even those folks were a little critical oh. of some of the things stadia did not deliver on like everything literally everything i remember mean, cyberpunk is coming to stadia guys it is. Oh, they're testing. God. They're testing Cyberpunk on Stadia right now as we speak. It may or may not be one of the reasons uh, Cyberpunk got delayed again. Maybe. All the more reason to be a Stadia stan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I own it. It's, uh, you know, it it streams fine, but <sighs> man, Stadia. Yeah. Woof. Yeah, that could <laughs> be an episode I mean, too. The greatest gaming disasters yeah um, i mean there we are many. that is true though we, we didn't talk much about cloud services which are, i think is actually going to be a pretty big thing especially with x cloud uh becoming fairly ubiquitous um because that's another value add that that xbox does have going for it right now is included with with game pass ultimate is x cloud um and so i mean you, you essentially don't even need to buy an xbox to play xbox games now um it's like hard to wrap my mind right around your, yeah right to your smart device as long as you have decent internet you're 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 good to go yeah all you really need is an xbox controller and your phone and xbox game pass boom does does, access to hundreds of games does that count as mobile gaming at that point in a way yeah and and that's the thing i think we're on the precipice of streaming changing a lot of what the games industry is going to be about because i mean like you know, we've mentioned Game Pass. That is essentially turning the industry into Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. It's using the Netflix model. But then you have the online streaming services. You got Amazon jumping into this shit with Luna. You had Google. They did a thing. Uh, and then you've got Project X Cloud, right? And I think PlayStation Now, which is hobbling along well enough, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, that, that's that's going to be something I think we need to watch and see how it affects the industry because it could either change everything or it could be like vr where it's still trying to it's it's trying in the mainstream it's trying you know? it's yeah. it's doing yeah. its thing i see what you're doing there mm-hmm. i think i think e3 time next year is going to be particularly interesting uh because we're going to see whether or not i mean whether or not we get e3 remains to be seen but whatever live stream lineup bullshit that we had this year that happens again next year um and see how much of a focus do, that we do get on on with with streaming, uh, what what the the ideas are with with VR, maybe PSVR two. See what's happening with that. Like, I mean, there there's so many different directions that it could go with it. I'm shit. I don't even know if PlayStation now is on PS five. So 
I haven't even um, checked. That's how little I care about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's shit. No, I, I, um, it actually, it is. I'm pretty sure it is. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, so, it, I don't know. The, 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 the future of this console generation is, is largely up in the air. I mean, who, who knows? Who knows where we're going to go? But that's the exciting part. I mean, it, we're still early. By the time you're hearing this, they came out last week. You know, like, it's... Right. It, 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 they've only been around for a little while. What I do hope is that the future of the game's community is a lot less um, Xbox and Sony ponies. Yeah. Because the point I want to leave off on, which is going to be a very ironic point because we've just waxed poetic about this shit for an hour, but I'm, I'm 80 to 120% sure that most of the people who comment PlayStation better or Xbox better are just trolls who want the attention and the, um, the, the clicks and the, uh, the word that starts with an I interactions. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, that's what they want. Just the little bit of clout right to make people mad because th th that's kind of what we just did yeah <laughs> the past hour, right? a little yeah. bit a little bit but hey i mean these things need to be talked about there i mean we're all just gamers at the end of the day just enjoy your your vidgy games and ignore the trolls that's all you really i mean if you're too busy gaming don't really have time to, to worry about trolls now do you well unless you're fighting a troll in the in your game in yep. in skyrim that mm -hmm. fucking frost troll coming at you 120 miles an hour. I hate you got, that You guys part. ready for a Skyrim 10th anniversary edition next year? For 11, PS5 11, and Xbox? 11, for Series S? GameCube, yeah. For Skyrim GameCube. ported to GameCube. Yo, is the Xbox just a tall GameCube? <gasps> it's taller than two GameCubes put together. Oh, shit. So it's a really tall GameCube. It is around is, the same <laughs> width, width and length. Is, is it two and a half GameCubes in a robe? Just stacked on top of each other. <laughs> the game I gotta go do a game so that Xbox could run. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all for listening. We appreciate you so much. Uh, if you would like to comment or send us questions, inquiries, or tell us about your experience gaming or with the Xbox or the Sony ponies, you can email us at everythinginpod at gmail.com. You can also follow us at everythinginpod on Twitter. If you want to keep up with what's going on, or you could tell us about your gaming experiences there. Yeah. And, Ooh. Hey, tweet at us or in the comments below. Let us know. Did you did you get a next gen console or are you one of the many, many people who are mad that you couldn't get one because all the bots and scalpers stole? Well, not stole. They paid for them, but then are selling them back at like thousands of dollars. Or are you one of those folks? Let us know. Yeah. Listen, and also PSA real quick. Uh, if you are really excited about these consoles and you don't have one yet please 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 even if you have the money do not buy from scalpers or yep. if you're a parent listening to this do not pay scalper prices just to get your kid that hot new console mm -mm. on christmas day don't feed the bears y'all right? don't feed the bears it's not, it's not worth it these people aren't worth it and we need to discourage this practice and that's my that's my ted talk for the day more like scalp turds yeah All right. exactly okay but remember if you are doing us the grace of listening on youtube make sure you hit that subscribe button below this video and also ding that bell to make sure you get notifications every time we post on thursdays but i believe unless you guys have anything else that is it for us uh yeah i've got nothing else except for um sony better xbox sucks <laughs> xbox great xbox best uh no you xbox five ever no you hey. more like hey guys we got it we got a new nintendo Play we, playstation we new... better Piss guys breath station. of the wild 2 is coming out <laughs> guys more... breath, of the, breath of the wild metroid prime 4 hey, <laughs> xbox xbox bad xbox good really okay we'll good. see you next thursday guys thanks love you bye Oh, hey guys, I'm PC. I'm late to the party. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs>